first of all i would like to thank the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity to speak at this auspicious uh, occasion the topic that has been given to me is uh, when to address trichosid regurgitation now trichosid valve as you all know is the largest valve in the heart it is placed between two low chamber uh, two low pressure chambers for long the trichosid valve has been considered as a forgotten valve primarily because surgeons believed that addressing the left sided valve issues would automatically resolve the right sided uh, issues unfortunately these prophecies have been proven proven to be wrong patients that worsened uh, their ra and rv dilatation as well as worsening of their trichosid regurgitation re uh, resulting in a poor long term outcome in the recent years there has been an increased interest in the use of uh, in the trichosid valve primarily because of the better understanding of the valve uh, anatomy as well as function but also stemming from the uh, reason that there is be, has been an increasing interest in percutaneous techniques to manage trichosid valve issues what we what we will do in the next 15 minutes is look at the anatomy of the trichosid valve what are the views that we use how do you assess the severity of the tr uh, of t uh, of tr and when to intervene and what kind of repair can be done the anatomy of the trichosid valve as you all know consists of three leaflets of unequal sizes Uh, the septal leaflet is usually the smallest, not not necessary. It is attached. The, there's an annular attachment of each of these leaflets. Each of these leaflets also receive papillary muscle, which vary in number from two to nine. But the most consistent is the anterior papillary muscle, which arises from the uh, moderator band. Each papillary muscle gives uh, chordae to adjacent leaflets. the junction between the the commissure between the septal and the posterior leaflet is related to the or, uh, the or the entry of the coronary sinus in the right atrium and uh, the right anterior the anterior leaflet of the trachea valve is related to the right coronary artery as well as the conduction system the trachea annulus on the other hand is an ellipsoidal structure with two high points which is related to the uh, rvot as well as aortic valve and two low points which is related to the coronary sinus now uh, normally the when the trichosid valve well, the the rv contracts the trichosid annulus also reduces in size by as much as 30% now dilate whenever dilatation of the uh, of the rv occurs or the, uh, the annulus occurs it always dilates towards a free wall because the septal attachment is more or less fixed as a result of which this ellipsoidal uh, saddle shaped structure of the annulus is lost resulting in a more planar structure this results in a few changes one is there is non coaptation of the uh, of the leaflets as a result of movement of the papillary muscles away from the uh, fr the, the distancing of the papillary muscles and there is progressive the non coaptation results in trichosid regurgitation the cause of trichosid regurgitation can be converted uh, can be uh, considered as congenital law required the acquired can be either primary or secondary as you all know 75% to 80% of the trichosid regurgitations account are secondary in nature the most common cause is an issue of the pathology on the left side of the heart you can have a peculiar situation called the atriogenic uh, tr when uh, because of chronic atrial fibrillation where the ra dilates but the rv more or less maintains its uh, normal anatomy some congenital uh, heart disease such as vsd can lead to tethering of the septal leaflet which in turn can cause an acquired secondary trichosid regurgitation also a few words about the pathophysiology as you all know functional tr leads to r leads to ra and rv dilatation which in turn cause uh, distancing of the papillary muscle or displacement as a result of which there is further non coaptation of the leaflet resulting in more and more trichosid regurgitation in the end stages that is there is the the enlarged right ventricle displaces the intraventricular septum towards uh, into the left ventricle as a result of which we have uh, reduced left ventricular end diastolic uh, volume which in turn causes an increase in the left ventricular end diastolic pressure which is transmitted back into the pulmonary system and which can aggravate the pulmonary hypertension that may already be existing in these patients then goes on an, a vicious cycle which ultimately leads to the death of the patient the trans thoracic views that we normally use include the parasternal modified long axis view of the trichosid valve 
the parasinal short axis view in which the aorta is at the center and you can see the RV inflow and outflow. The apical four chamber view and the subcephoid view. I'm not going to show any of these views because short of time. The transesophageal views that we're interested in the mid in the transgastric. The mid four chamber view is the classical one. Then you have the mid right RV inflow outflow view. The modified bicaval view. And then the transgastric short axis view of the tracks as well as the RV inflow view. Now, as you can see in this picture, the, this is the mediocephal four chamber view. The leaflet that is towards your, uh, towards the septum is a septal leaflet. And the one that is uh, away on the left side of the screen can either be the anterior leaflet or the posterior leaflet, depending on the degree of retroflexion of, of, of your TE probe. This is the RV inflow outflow view. Again, the leaflet on the right side is the anterior leaflet. The leaflet on the left side of the screen becomes the posterior leaflet. That this view is very important it gives you, because it gives you a view of the RV outflow as well as the pulmonary annulus and the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary valve. Then you have the modified bicable view in which uh, the 120 degree uh, view is taken and then rotated anti-clockwise to get the uh, leaflet the tricuspid valve. The, the leaflet on the right side of the screen is the anterior leaflet and one on the left side is the posterior leaflet. This view is very important because this is the best view to obtain a Doppler alignment with your tricuspid regurgitation. From the same view, if you introduce your probe a little inwards and rotate it slightly towards the right, you can actually see the hepatic inflow into the inferior vena cava. This view is very important because during this, in this assessment of the severity of the uh, of the tricuspid regurgitation, the hepatic Doppler plays an important role. Then you come to a transgastric view. This is a, uh, uh, the, the, uh, in, in, you get the tran transgastric short axis view of the aortic valve. And then you rot uh, rotate the probe towards the right so as to get that RV into view. And then from there, you increase the angle to one, 120, 190 to 120, you get the uh, leaflets the posterior leaflet is in the upper part of the screen and the anterior leaflet is in the bottom part of the screen. The best view, the, this is the best view to see the caudal attachment as well as the papillary muscles, muscular attachments of the tracks with well. This is a modified transgastric uh, view in which the RV inflow as well as the outflow can be easily seen. Uh, from uh, the RV inflow outflow view, I, if you reduce your uh, angle to 30 to 40 degrees, you can get what is known as a uh, uh, short axis of view. This is the only view in which all three leaflets of the tricuspid valve can be seen. The septal leaflet is towards the right of the screen, the posterior leaflet towards the upper part of your screen, and anterior leaflet towards the lower part of your screen. Uh, the deep transgastric view is not actually a uh, view of the uh, of the uh, of the tricuspid valve. It actually shows you an outflow of the right ventricle. 3D echo has now come into prominence. The, the major advantage of using the 3D is that you are able to visualize the, all three leaflets of the tricuspid valve in different views. You can see the commissures and the abnormalities that are uh, uh, understanding, helpful understanding the function of the normal analysis and changes associated with the annular enlargement. Here are some of the views that uh, you can use. Now, this is the, after acquiring the 3D uh, picture. We, rotate it and uh, program in such a way you see the tricuspid the mitral valve on the left side, the tricuspid valve on the right side of the screen, and you can see the aortic valve wedged between these two valves, as well as uh, in the far field, you can actually see the pulmonary valve. We also, uh, these are other views of the 3D, and this, as you all know, is the transgastric uh, short axis view of the, of the tricuspid, tricuspid valve. Now, how do you assess the severity of the tricuspid regurgitation? Three methods, qualitative, semi-quantitative, and quantitative. We'll go through the details of each of these. Now, coming to the uh, qualitative assessment, one is looking at the assessment of the tricuspid uh, uh, leaflets. Now, remember that uh, the, uh, the, the minimal TR is present in about 65% of the population. It's a small central jet, which doesn't go more than one centimeter into the right atrium. When you look at the pathology of the tricuspid leaflet, you look at the mobility, the thickness, the, the calcification, any, re, any restrictions of the movement. An annular diameter of more than 22 millimeters per meter squared or an absolute value of more than 40 millimeters is generally considered as indicative of severe TR. You also look at what is known as the tenting, 
distance as well as the tending height, a tending dis uh, height of more than 0.75 centimeters and the tending dis uh, area of more than uh, one centimeter square is generally considered severe tear. It also, they also say that if your tending area is greater than 1.6 square centimeters or tending height is more than one centimeter, even if you do a repair, significant residual TR can be expected. The second thing is the jet area. This is the first and foremost thing that I want to tell about jet area is that jet area should only be used for diagnosing trigus with regurgitation. should never be used for assessment of the severity because it can be a big fallacy. Wall hugging jets, may be equal or worse than that of a central jet, which may uh, create a more larger jet area. In general, what is indicated is that if your jet area is more than 10 square centimeters, it is considered as severe TR. And uh, some people also look at the ratio of the jet area versus the RA. Anything more than 35% is considered as, as, as significant. In any case, if you have a jet area, jet which actually reaches the roof of the right atrium, is generally considered as significant tear. We also put the color Doppler when you look qualitatively. The important thing to remember is that as the severity of the tear increases, the density of the color uh, uh, continuous wave Doppler increases. In fact, in late severe tear, you may get a triangular, dense, truncated jet. Now, this is mainly because of the rapid equilibration of pressure between the RA and the, and the RV. Marked respiratory variation is also considered as an indicator of severe respiratory, uh, uh, severe uh, trichus with regurgitation. And never look at the jet velocity because in many of these patients, when there is torrential TR, as the new term that we'll be discussing later, comes in that jet velocity actually comes down at maybe less than uh, two meters per second. Coming to semi-qualitative, the most important thing is the vena contractor, which as you all know is the narrowest portion of the regurgitant jet. A value of more than seven millimeters is generally considered severe TR. Two-day values always underestimate the actual vena contractor because 3D values as, as studies have actually shown that the vena contractor is more of an anterior posterior rather than a lateral, uh, 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 lateral diameter, which is more important. And in fact, studies have actually shown that if you're uh, vena contractor by 3D is more than 0.36 centimeter square area. It's considered as severe TR. We also look at the uh, flow convergence or the PISA radius and a radius of more than 0.9 millimeters generally considered as severe TR. A value of less than five is generally considered as uh, mild uh, TR. This further classified the, the upper limit, which I'll be showing in the subsequent slides. When we used to look at the semi qualitative we also look at the pulse wave Doppler of the tricuspid inflow into the right ventricle. And some because the large volume of, as severe to the right tricuspid regurgitation actually increases, the initial flow into the right ventricle may actually have, uh, have high velocities and an EVA velocity of more than one meter per second is generally considered as, as severe TR. The hepatic venous flow can also be used, as I mentioned earlier, normal value, uh, the, you have the SD and the A waves, as you call, see in the pulmonary vein, venous structure. What is indicative of severe TR is a uh, reversal of the, uh, of, the T, uh, of the S wave is considered as severe TR. On the other hand, blunting of the S wave is not indicative of severe TR because other factors such as uh, decreased RA or RV compliance can cause a similar picture of uh, blunting of the S wave. So you look at the S wave, it is, it is reversed, it's indicative of severe TR. Among the quantitative, uh, the most important thing are two things. One is the effective orifice area, a value of more than 0.4 centimeters squared or a regurgitant volume of more than 45 ml is generally considered as indicative of severe TR. We also, as far as the quantitative values are concerned, we also look at the RV. Remember that RV is almost only two, normally two third about the LV. A large RV with an end diastolic volume, which is more than 0.2 uh, uh, centimeters per centimeters uh, meter square, or an ejection fraction of less than 25% at end systole, is generally considered as, as severe tear. 
An apex forming RV, as you can see, is again considered as severe tear. We also look at the, the tap seed. Values less than 15 are considered as impact, but a value of less than 8.5, it indicates with the presence, the presence of TR indicates severe impact RV function. And finally, the transgastric view also tells you the position of the intraventricular septum, which is D-shaped because of the volume over, over, overload. Uh, uh, in recent years, there has been an increasing uh, uh, tendency to uh, uh, create the severe uh, uh, the, the severe forms of TVR, TR into into uh, sub something different. For the primary reason, because there are more and more patients who are being registered for interventional procedures. These patients have severe TR, of course, but then the grade of TR varies significantly as a result of which, when you do an intervention, we find that the improvement, uh, the, it is difficult to assess the severe, the improvement that is brought about by the interventional techniques. So most of these patients who are registered for the uh, percutaneous techniques have one to two grades above that of the normal, what is so-called uh, severe tier. Based on this, a new current system has actually been brought up, which is known as uh, the severe versus the massive versus the torrential. I have, I have no time to spend on all these things, but basically if you look at the chart, you'll find that the, the ejection, uh, effective regurgitation orifice area by 2D, the effective regurgitation orifice area by 3D, and the regurgitation volume are the main factors which determines whether the trichosis, severe trichosis regurgitation is actually severe, massive, or torrential. Now, when do you inter intervene? Based on the European Society uh, uh, guidelines, in patients with primary TR, if you have a symptomatic TR, even in the absence of no, uh, uh, or no RV dilatation or RV dysfunction, is a class one indication for intervening. In the presence of severe TR, a patient is undergoing a left-sided surgery. Again, it is considered as a class one indication. On the other hand, a moderate TR, but left-sided surgery is ongoing. It's again a class two A indication. And even patients with mild to moderate TR with RV dilatation or dysfunction and, uh, uh, undergoing a left-sided surgery can, consider, can, can should be considered as a two A indication. More commonly, the secondary triage Severe TR in the presence of left side surgery is a class one indication. And in the presence of mild to moderate TR with the large annulus or, and undergoing a left sided surgery, this patient is, should be considered as indicative of severe, of, of the indication for intervening. Now, the areas of debate includes replacement or repair. Now, the prime, what do you do? In patients with primary TR with complex issues, replacement is preferable over repair. On the other hand, the vast majority of the patients who undergo function, who have functional TR because of left-sided issues, then the main uh, it is, uh, repair is preferred over replacement. Now, for, as far as the repair is concerned, from since 17, 1972, Devega repair has been the primary mode of repair. Till recent years, where it has been shown that when we use anloplasty rings, the residual TR is significantly less than that of the Devega repair as a result of which anloplasty rings have actually come into, into practice. Again, the question debate still exists whether you should use a rigid ring, a ring versus a flexible ring. As far as replacement is concerned, there is no consensus on whether you should use a mechanical valve or a bioprosthetic valve. Remember that it's a low pressure system. When you put a mechanical valve, there's always a chance that the valve can get uh, thrombos. In my experience, in, uh, when I was in Chitra, we used to do a lot of right, uh, trichosis replacement for uh, cardiomyopathies, uh, uh, constrictive, uh, restrictive cardiomyopathies, and most of these patients used to come back in three months with severely blocked. Definitely, uh, bioprosthetic valves have a role here. However, some people believe that in younger patients of childbearing age, maybe a mechanical valve is, is, is probably indicated. In summary, trichosis valve, which is once considered as a forgotten valve, is now receiving a lot of attention. The natural history of unattended trichosis regurgitation is bad. The, there is a new revision of the severe TR into massive as well as torrential. 
based on 2D as well as 3D echocardiographic finding. Severity is assessed based on the vena contractor, the effective orifice area based on both the 2D as well as the 3D and regurgitated volumes are the, brain, are the main parameters. Now, controversy still exists whether you should repair or replace, when, when, and if it is replacement, a tissue valve or a bioprosthetic valve should be used. Thank you very much.